Hi guys and welcome to the first video in a series of video tutorials where we're going to be looking at Android Studio to learn how to program in Java. So if you've got no experience whatsoever in programming that's fine. We're going to start from scratch, we're going to start with the basics and we're going to use Android Studio to learn all that we need to know. So what that will allow us to do is will allow us to uh, test all our coding on, on your own Android device or, or, gonna, or we can use an emulator but we're going to be going through all the basics and I'm going to try and try and teach you it in a way that you can easily understand so it'll be nice and slow I'll try and keep it simple but the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to install Android Studio so we're going to open up a browser and we're going to type in Android Studio so we see this download Android Studio so we're going to click on that those are the terms and conditions that if you want to sit down and read be my guest once you've read it, tick the box and download download Android Studio for Windows, and it's now downloading. So that's it's quite a big file, 1.1 gig. And like it says here, Android Studio provides everything you need to start developing apps for Android, including the Android Studio IDE and the Android SDK tools. And so that's the IDE, the, the uh, integrated development environment, and the SDK uh, SDK tools, which is your software development kit, basically. So because we're going to be using Java, what you need to do is you need to make sure you've got the Java uh, SDK installed. It says it, um, yeah, before you set up Android Studio, be sure you have install, uh, installed J, uh, JDK 6 or higher. Um, JDK 7 is required when developing for Android 5.0 and above. Um, to check if you have JDK, JDK installed, uh, what you need to do is you're going to have to open up a um, command prompt. So just in your in your search the web windows just type cmd the command you get command prompt and just we're just going to want to type uh, java um, space minus version just press enter and in this case it detects that I've got java installed if you don't have java installed uh, it will say um, java not found or uh, come up with an error what the error is um, but it won't come up with this it won't say the job to give you the Java version so you're going to need to download and install the uh, Java SDK so there's a link here so just click on this link and it'll take you to the oracle.com website and if you scroll down this is going to be for, for Windows 64-bit so under this Java SE development kit in my case I downloaded the 64-bit version and don't forget it won't you need to tick this accept license agreement and then you can just click on this link to download this file 140 meg uh, once that's up once that's installed just run it it's a pretty straightforward installation just click next and it will and let the default choices install the software for you and it's uh, in a, a location and it's very very simple so once you've installed uh, your uh, SDK you can go ahead and install your uh, Android Studio once it's downloaded so I'm just going to cancel this so I've already got it okay once that's downloaded we can just open that up we can minimize this now we don't need that we're going to run okay standard setup window just click next so you've got your Android Studio, your Android SDK, your virtual device for using your um, testing all your coding and your programs on a, on an emulator, which is recommended. So it's automatically detected. And we have a uh, hardware-assisted virtualization engine. It all this does is it speeds up the emulation software when you uh, run your emulator. Only if your uh, PC has an Intel chip. It's not. It's not necessary. It's not a requirement. It just helps speed up the emulator when when you go to run it. So you can go you can go ahead and tick that if you have an Intel chip. If not, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But I, I have an Intel chip, so I'm going to install that. So just click next. Uh, usual um, terms and conditions, license agreement. I agree. I agree. It, and it defaults to these settings. You can change them if you like. I keep them default. So this is where it's going to put the Android Studio installation and this is where it's going to put the SDK uh, all your SDK files because you will need to download some more. So just click next. 
and this configuration uh, setting, the configuration setting has, has actually picked up that my system can run the it can run the emulator in an accelerated performance mode. So it's going to recommend an amount of RAM to be made available for the hardware accelerated manager, and just diff recommends two gigabytes here. So just keep it as gig, two gig, or the recommended value. So the value must be between five, 512 meg and 13 gig. Keep it as is. Install Android Studio. It's going to go ahead and install that. It's a big install. So okay, and we're complete. So next, and we're all done. So we just click finish, and Android Studio should start up. And it's asking us that we can com import our settings from a previous version of Studio, which we don't have, so I do not have a version. Okay. And it's going to go ahead and download Essential SDK Platform Android version 6 API 23 files. So let, let, it, let, it, do what's, let it do that. It may take a while. Okay, so it's come up with an error. Uh, the following SDK components was not installed. Uh, you can try it. It's going to retry that. You may get that. I don't know why that's come up. Okay, so we've got this box come up. Um, we've got a finish dialog here. Click on finish, and we've got this screen here. Now, before we go ahead and start a new Android project, we're going we're gonna to want to configure. We click on configure, and we want to configure our SDK manager. Now we've got a, an Android SDK location here by default. That's where all our all our platforms and our tools uh, are stored. So at the moment we've got uh, Android 6 um, SDK files installed. There is an update available, and uh, all these uh, version and API levels haven't been installed. And now we're going to launch the uh, standalone SDK manager. And this gives us a, 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 a breakdown of everything that is installed and what we can install. Now it's immediately, immediately suggested that there are nine packages that we need to install. I'm just going to make this window a little bit bigger so we can see what we have installed, what we haven't. Now if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we've got these extras. Now I strongly suggest just tick the extras box and just download everything. You definitely want to want your Google Play services a repository there's a USB driver here you've got our uh, Intel emulator accelerator which you may you may want if you have an Intel chip so with all this with that, that ticks there's another nine packages so it's saying there's 18 packages all together click on that opens up this other window and we just want to accept the license and then we can install and it will install all these one by one and that will probably take a while. This is quite a big download, so we'll let that download. Oh, by the way, those nine packages that it suggested initially—that was these ones here from the from its API 23. Okay, so now it's uh, downloading packages. So it's installed installed those, but it still says installed in one package. So I'm guessing it it can't install everything at once. Has to pre-install some stuff before it can continue. So we we'll, we'll carry on with that, install one package, accept the license, install, and that's done. So we've got all these extras installed, and uh, for our API 23, we've got all the essentials installed. So we're pretty much ready to go. So we can OK that, and it takes us back to our configuration window press the back arrow and we can start a new Android project. We click start, ask us for a, an application name. We just go with the, the defaults at the moment, uh, my application, and it's asking us to select the form factors your app will run on. And most of the time we're just gonna, we're gonna be using this phone and tablet and we can generate programs for uh, Android, uh, Google wearable devices, TVs, Google Glass, and but for most, most cases we're gonna be using Phone, uh, a phone and tablets. Now it's asking for a minimum SDK. So what this what this means is, what's the lowest Android revision that you want your software or your program to run on? So in this case, anything later than Android 4.0.3, which is Ice Cream Sandwich, your device will run on. 
which is in this case approximately 96.2% of all devices that use the Google Play Store. So we can, we can just use that um, recommended settings and click next. These are all different types of activities that we can use but in most cases we're going to actually going to be using an empty activity. So we'll click on empty activity, next. It's asking for our activity names. Don't don't worry too much about this for now. Leave the um, defaults and just click finish. And it's creating our project for us. And the first time you run this, it will probably take quite a while. Um, it's just initializing. A tip of the days, we can we can um, untick that because we don't want to see this. This is um, mainly for advanced users. So we can just click. Um, Untick that and click close, and we shouldn't see that again. We can maximize this window. Um, it's still building. Um, you see this bar, so if you think, oh, there's there's nothing coming up. It's it's still uh, still working. And here we are, ready to go. And uh, there's our start starter screen. So this is our Java code. And it's it, this what this will do it will provide us with a very basic minimum runnable program because this will actually run and if we actually click on this tab here it will actually give us a visual representation of what we're likely to see on our device so in this case it's it's going to use a Nexus 4 virtual device just to give you a, a rough representation of what you'll see so that's that's installing the software it's pretty straightforward it doesn't take too long most of the time it's just waiting for download downloading all the files that you need and what we'll do is in the next video we'll look at how you can run we can this is a runnable program so on our next video we'll run this on a on an emulator and also we'll try and run it on on an actual device which i'm sure you'll, you'll put you'll probably have so thanks for watching guys uh thanks for subscribing don't forget to click on that like button if you like this video and i'll hopefully see you in the next video